Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're making fruit and nut gulab jamun. You all are in for a treat and your guests will absolutely love this. And the best part about this, we're not having to make that sugar syrup that coats the outside. If you having if you have issues making that, we're going to be doing a shortcut today. So stay tuned. Let me show you all how easy this one is to put together. We're going to start off in a bowl with our flour you're going to use three packed cups of flour don't spoon in the flour you want to pack the flour in really well go in with some powdered milk you use coconut milk too if you want some baking powder some pumpkin spice and you can add more of the pumpkin spice if you wanted a stronger flavor and in goes cardamom or elaichi powder feel free to add as much or as little as the spices as you like it so now we're going to go in with some sliced almonds, some raisins, and some chopped cherries. Now these cherries are the maraschino cherries, but they're not the ones that's packed in water. Now we're going to give this a mix. And then we'll go in with some ghee or unsalted butter. Kerrygold butter is great also in here. If you're using it for puja, make sure it's unsalted. And if you wanted to omit the baking powder, you can just break or cut that into the flour. And now for the next step is adding in the condensed milk and the carnation milk or evaporated milk. So I used an entire can of condensed milk and I used half of the can of evaporated milk. So what you're going to do is add a little at a time and mix. And then if you need more liquid, you add some more evaporated milk, some more condensed milk and keep mixing until it all comes together into a soft, medium soft dough. You don't want it too hard and you don't want it very, very soft. So it must hold together into a dough ball actually. So you'll see me here still adding again. And I like adding a little at a time because sometimes all different brands of flour would absorb different amounts. So you never want to just add all at once. Once it looks like this, like cookie dough, you're going to break off a piece, squeeze it in your hands, roll it well, want it to be nice and smooth, and then roll it into an almond shape. You want it to be somewhat more chubby or thick and then the next step will be frying this on low heat so on my electric stove I had it at a number four I actually don't have a thermometer to check the oil to tell you the temperature but as you can see here it's not like bubbling away crazy it's very low and it's going to take its time and fry if you're not seeing bubbles like this, you'd want to raise your heat a pinch. So allow it to fry until they're golden brown. And you'll notice after a while, they'll start floating on their own. Once they're beautiful and golden, it's time to remove them from that hot oil jacuzzi. Place them in a bowl that's lined with paper towel. Or wax paper and allow them to drain and yes they do have little cracks in them that's just normal don't worry I love when it has those little cracks so the sugar goes into the cracks so this is what we're going to be doing for the sugar coating we're using powdered sugar clear vanilla some pumpkin spice and some whole milk to make a pancake like butter Now when you're doing this, you're going to add the milk in a little at a time because if you add too much milk and it's too runny, it's not going to coat the caramel properly and you'll have to add some more icing sugar to thicken it. So you want to take your time, mix this. If you need more milk, add a touch more. And continue to mix. Now this is the consistency you're going for. Now place all of your kerma into one big bowl 
and then we're going to drizzle that icing sugar mixture all over the kurma. I love when it gets into those cracks and you bite into this, it just melts in your mouth. All you have to do now is toss to coat them. And once you finish coat them, leave them in the bowl, let them sit for about 10 minutes, they'll dry out and then you can package. It dries out really quickly so you don't have to wait long. You can place it on a wire rack if you wanted to speed up the process. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. It was yummy, it was delicious, and I can't wait for you all to make it. Comment down below, let me know what you think. Feel free to email me if you have any comments or if you have any requests, leave them down below. Any questions regarding Diwali, please email me. I will answer your emails. Thank you all so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.